Old Man and the Gun. David Lowry letting Robert Redford just be fucking charming as hell in his yep. last performance. Um, just to kind of give you a bit of a background, and I don't want to spoil too much about First Man, but I saw First Man on Saturday and then this Sunday morning. And First Man was excellent and it's well done movie but i didn't love it i loved the old man the gun it's probably in my top 10 movies this year at this point um and i think i think what i liked most about it was it was a story that it was a lot of fun to watch redford gives just a fucking awesome performance and i'm i'm hoping he gets a, a last nomination uh in this role for uh best actor I thought the story stayed so true to who the characters were when it started, when it seemed to be kind of twisting and turning and being about one thing and the way it ended just kind of pulls it right back. And I was like, you know what, even though I didn't, that wasn't the ending I was hoping for because I was rooting for them as a couple. Mm -hmm. I ended up really feeling like it was a much more realistic and true ending. And it I told a great story. I think about human, the human condition that, uh, you're not going to see in theaters uh, done better this year. So uh, that that's my gushing review. L give me yours. Yeah, no, I think it's uh, for one, it's a uh, 90 minutes long, a drama that's 90 minutes and does not feel short. Does not overstay its welcome either. It's it, it, it moves at a, a, a brisk pace, but it, it's done well. And again, I, again, it all hinges on what Redford uh, brings to the table because he's in almost every scene yep. that doesn't have Casey Affleck in it, basically. And he, you know, he's really charming. He's, uh, you know, he he really chews on his lines in this. Show. And I think you know, he really relishes um, be portraying Forrest Tucker. And mm -hmm. you know, the story about the film, he was the one who optioned um, the story and basically got the movie made. So he was obviously interested in the character. He's got um, that and, clout. And, um, you know, it's, it's funny because like, they 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 uh the script is cites the new yorker article from 2003 that david grand wrote called the old man the gun like that's what's cited hmm. and I read the thing it's, it took me like 25 minutes to read the whole story but you know that's like like david grand from the new yorker basically got got the story by <sighs> meeting Forrest sucker and talking to all the people and stuff and it's like it's just it's just a long ass new yorker essay that's really what the story <laughs> <laughs> came from uh which is really cool and again yeah. i really recommend reading that because Hearing, reading all the real stories, a lot of which is more or less in the movie in some fashion, uh, is cool. But yeah, I mean, David Lowry, who I haven't seen any of his other films. I know he got a lot of acclaim for Ghost Story last year. He's got a few other films. Um, mm -hmm. You know, he, he he wrote this, he directed this, he also uh, location uh, scouted everything. Like, and I remember he mentioned that they went, they wanted to get like cool locations for all the banks, and like mm -hmm. you. So I remember one of the first banks they go to. I'm like, Fuck, that does not look like a bank. That's a cool ass building. So. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> and just all those like little touches and um, the fashion, the, the vehicles. Yeah. It, it definitely feels like a period film. And you know, again, I mean, it's not, it's not like showy, and that's about the robbing, right? It's not. It's not. A, it's not really a crime movie. You know. No. You know from a, a bank robbers movie it's not really what it is again like you said it's about the human condition it's about right uh forrest tucker finally coming to grips with himself in a certain extent you know I, you can really i guess uh, take it in a lot of ways but seeing that um unfold i thought was cool and even casey affleck uh his character who was uh, played the cop yeah uh, uh, basically hunting him down uh similar so similar themes you know in terms right. of uh, me being a you know really whimsical and whatnot so yeah i think the movie is uh, really really uh worth a watch it, it's funny because it's not making a lot of money it's not a wide release or anything like that but yeah. it's slip under the radar minus the redford buzz but you know i think this is a movie that a lot of people would like if they saw it just they probably just don't even know about it you know it's, it's interesting thinking about how the story is told with uh Affleck's character and Redford's character both kind of uh, finding out like who they are and what they really like about life and what they do uh, and what it means for them to to kind of be them. And there, there's a lot of symmetry in it because I think you know you could 
kind of whittle it down to the idea of like, well, some people are criminals and some people are cops. But I think there's a little bit more to the idea of like some people really like the chase and some people like to be chased and some people find meaning in, um, you know, doing things that they have to run from. And some people like to be the people that kind of bring things home and, and find purpose in uh, uh, justice. And it's, uh, I don't know. I, I keep coming back to Elizabeth Moss's character, actually, in it, which, first of all, shout out Elizabeth Moss just being like, I don't know, a bit character, kind of a throwaway. Crazy. Um, but when she talks, when she tells the story about uh, her mom and how, you know, uh, Hunter or uh, Forrest, sorry, would always kind of come back and say, no, I've changed, I've changed, I've changed. And he would always go back and rob another bank. And then at the end, when they say that he stayed in jail, he didn't he didn't break out of that jail. And uh, <laughs> then he goes out to get some milk or go out and run to run an errand. And he robs four banks in one day before he gets caught. It's like it's so perfect because who that who he was then is just who he is now. And like you said, it's kind of him just coming to realize it. But the way that they show that with that interview and then how it ends, I thought was just so beautiful and how he. The, like the gamesmanship of it, how he really just enjoyed the chase. Like mm-hmm. he, he kind of fucks with Affleck when he sees him in the, the diner and they're having that conversation and the way he approaches them. And it's just like, Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure you'll find him. <laughs> and, he, and he's like, it, it makes you look like, you know what you're doing. Then Affleck's like, uh, Forrest, I, I do know what I'm doing. It's like, it was just like so well done between them. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I don't know. And Affleck's face in that was so perfect. How it was kind of like that shock, but also like, so enjoying that scene between them. It was just, it was a fun. Soundtrack. I know that that's kind of weird. Like uh, maybe something that doesn't stand out that much, but I thought the way that they use jazz, but also like old, older folk folk songs. And uh, a lot of, I think there's some giant cash in there and, and stuff. It's, it's just really, uh, it kind of brings the whole vibe of it home, like you said. So, uh, def- I, I would highly recommend it. One of my favorite movies of the year so far. 